guys, what is going on and welcome back to another video on Conqueror's Blade. So, today we are revisiting the Imperial Archers. The kind of one of the, I'm going to say quite, quite more meta archers that are kind of in the game at the moment. And it's been quite a long time since we've last visited them. Not only have we had epic doctrines, but I've also changed around the veterancy line and kind of adjusted my playstyle on them a little bit. So, yeah, quite a few things have changed on them, so I thought it was worth a bit of a revisit. I guess it's worth saying at the start, I don't like archers, really. I'm not much of an archer player. Um, I generally don't bring them casually if I'm just playing, or only very, very rarely. I, I just tend to find that archers, you sort of have to be really micromanage them from enemy archers, enemy trebs, enemy melee units. So that means as a melee hero, I'm sort of stuck with them a little bit. Okay, you can kind of push forwards of them a little bit sometimes, but a lot of the time I'm removing myself as an asset, as a hero, and I just don't really like that. Combined with the fact, and, and and so then that kind of means that I get bored and leave them, <laughs> get stuck into a fight, turn around, and they've all been wiped out by a cav charge that I didn't notice or something like that. So yeah, I tend not to really like archers. I think it stops you from pushing the point, and yeah, okay, you can get some damage, but I think it lowers your win rate to be honest most of the time. So yeah, not a huge archer fan if I'm honest, but these guys have been quite enjoyable because they do have really quite decent damage. So I'm running along the bottom line now. Mostly because quite a few people last time recommended that I should be basically running with the Bodkin ability on permanently. The Bodkin ability greatly increases piercing AP, but reduces fire rate by 25% and damage by 10. Well, on the bottom line, you basically get 20% um, fire rate increase to Bodkin. So in effect, Bodkin is now only 5% slower than without it. So it's basically a negligible impact. You still get the 10% damage loss, but with the 10% damage increase to infantry and a lot of the um, the damage increases you get along the bottom, it's well worth it because it means your piercing armor penetration, you know, goes up way above 2000, something like that. And actually it means you do decent damage. You know, you'll still be hitting Stalwarts for like 1500, something like that, compared to a normal archer unit, which might only be hitting them for a few hundred. So it is well worthwhile, in my opinion, running them just on the permanent, um, permanent Bodkin. I guess the only time you wouldn't think about doing it is if I guess you ran just up against some serfs or something like that, something very lightly armoured. But again, realistically, it's barely worth the effort of flicking through the switch. So not really worthwhile. Um, doctrine wise, we've obviously now got some epic doctrines, so we've got some pretty decent stuff. Obviously, the 50% increased ammo is super nice. I mean, that's a huge increase and makes a real big difference. On top of that, with just the base piercing damage increase by 100, well, that's really nice. It's better than any um, ordinary piercing damage increase, which is only getting 60. You might as well stick it on. Well worth having. More than makes up for some of the 10% losses you're getting with um, the, the Bodkin. On top of that, we get another 100% piercing damage increase plus a 50% AP increase, um, which is strange that they made two doctrines so similar, but might as well stick them both on. Um, so we're getting that plus 200 piercing damage, which is really nice to have. I could throw on the extra 5 meters range, but I find realistically most of the time I'm not running up to maximum range. Very occasionally, I suppose, but I tend to use them as a much more close range unit. They're not longbows. I kind of just try to get them up close and personal. So I just throw on a um, hero killing one, um, mostly because I have one lying around. And I do find that they kill heroes quite effectively, so I think it's well worth having on. And then we just throw a little bit of piercing AP damage on there as well, because to try and get that base AP damage that little bit higher. Other than that, I think that's probably all about I've got to save them. Let's have a look what the kit cost is. We are a whopping 3-1. Okay, pretty reasonable to be honest. That's not actually so bad. Let's restock them. Oh, 31,000 silver. Uh, bronze I'm never going to get back. Um, but yeah, other than that, quite an interesting unit. Quite enjoyable, although I still find myself getting killed by longbow heroes and random explosions and other archers pretty easily. But let's hop into some battles, see what we can do, and see how we've been getting on with these guys. So we hop into Dasa Fort, actually kind of an old map that we've really not seen very much for a while. But I was playing around with these archers and they started to make a bit of a push on the sea point. And initially, this is kind of why I dislike archers as a class, not really specifically these archers. Just that I, I want my paladins, I just want to get stuck in and defend the point. And I dislike the fact that, I don't know, I'm kind of reliant on the team and I can only really be a support. But anyway, it is what it is. So while I push around, I'm starting to try and to get my archers in a position where I can really start to get some accurate shots. 
Thankfully, we have a good bit of team support come up and actually managed to clear that initial push and we actually managed to get the little volley on. These guys really are hero killers. They will cut through enemy heroes if they get too close, if they get a full volley into them. And this is where they seem to do quite well. Pretty close range, um, accurate shots, you know, every shot is landing into an enemy and look how quickly they start to pick up really extreme damaging kills. Remember they fire pretty fast even with the bodkin mode on and the damage values they're getting are really quite good. You know, we're shooting against Azaps here and we're hitting sort of almost 2,000 per shot. It's really not bad going, we're up to 40 kills already. This maul comes down to think he can have a little bit of a go and yeah, yeah, as I said, Hero killers, they, they really do cut through enemy heroes if they get a chance to get a volley into them. So if you're attacking these guys, you've got to be really careful. You've got to keep moving um, so that they can't hit you so easily because they will cut you down super quickly, even if you are a mall player. I think a little bit more bold, we push on, turn around, and basically we can just get shots into the remaining enemies. And you know, that's sort of 50, 60 kills really in a very quick period of time. It shows how brutal these guys can be. Unfortunately, at the same time, we do end up losing the C point, uh, the B point, sorry, and I end up going back and switching out to a different unit. But it just kind of shows how much damage you can get in such a quick period of time, and that's what, for me, the unit is all about. On the second clip, I'd actually um, crashed and only just come back into the game. Um, so I'm now looking basically just to get set up to try and help defend the final point. I, I always feel like range doesn't tend to last very long in this part of the map because the enemy will always push around that corner and just drive straight into the range. So I didn't really expect them to survive. You know, I'll try and keep them as alive as what I can, but I kind of assumed that they were probably not going to be living too long. But as the fight develops, they're actually starting to rack up a few kills here. And because they're mostly shooting into the backs of the enemies are, who are sort of turning left around the corner, we're pretty much critting value on every time. We've got a unit of paladins in front to protect, but unfortunately we get these super high going around. Thankfully, they don't go quite far enough back into our archers, and it means our archers can shoot shooting. Then we get some stalwarts, things are getting real serious now, but I'm able to survive long enough, even though this maul tries to go for me, to actually get a fair bit of hero damage into the back of those stalwarts. And actually, once they lose the stalwarts and the 40 foot pressure are unprotected, I mean, you can see how many kills we're up to already. They just absolutely brutalize these foot pressure because they're just undefended, and they're hitting for like 1,500, 2,000 a shot. Their health just absolutely nosedives. And actually, we get to get up to almost 50 kills, you know, in the space of a minute. And that enables the unit, still pretty much full health, only lost two of them, to get into the fight. And they're now starting to rain some fire on these 40s on the main point. And it really enables us as a team to actually sort of help clear the main point. One of the few times that I felt like archers have actually been useful is sort of in a situation like that. Because I think most times I'd rather have myself, you know, a melee unit and get sort of stuck in. But yeah, seemed to go pretty well there. And actually we basically completely wiped the enemy push, which was pretty nice. I was pretty pleased with that. And even grabbed a little hero kill at the end. So with that, there was kind of a bit of a lull. And I thought, wow, now's probably a good time to get the unit back, get on the supply point. Of course, they have got that 50% extra ammo uh, epic doctrine, which really does make them last a fairly long time. That was a pretty decently long fight and they only used half their ammo. But, you know, we're kind of potentially expecting a second enemy push. A little bit of the team actually kind of pushed out to take the fight to the enemy. I, I kind of felt that was a mistake a little bit. We were pretty close still on unit numbers. And we've still got five minutes to go. Um, and I was a little bit worried some of the team might get themselves killed and, and then there'd be sort of a, a, a revived enemy surge. But they seemed to not risk too much and actually get back pretty safely to the base to help defend. So it was all in all not too bad. And obviously I'm calling the unit back, planning on putting them in a similar position at least initially. But I kind of think, well, Maybe I can get some shots on them from the front. They're not really here yet. They're still sort of positioning themselves. I guess we've got to watch out for trebs and enemy ranged, but it potentially gives me an opportunity to get some early shots in. Even if we don't get many kills, you know, we can actually rack up a fair chunk of damage and we do start to kill a little bit of stuff as it starts to approach. I'm just trying to keep an eye out for enemy trebs. Um, and you can see they're just starting to set off now. It takes me a little bit of time to notice them. I finally realise and I make my dash for it. We actually start getting shot by a bit of enemy ranged as well. But we actually managed to avoid the bulk of the the bulk of the issue. Most of the unit survives. And we can kind of position them on this end flank now and start to fire in. Then luckily, another double stack of Fort Depression, <laughs> which seems to be these Imparcher's favourite targets. And yeah, you can see how quickly we pick up kills with them. 
you know, because they really cut through units like this. They're pretty accurate, this sort of range, because we're quite a close range. And we're really able to just build up the damage and really blunt kind of a lot of this enemy attack. And since I decided that the team has kind of got almost like a little bit of a front line against them now, it was almost worth dragging the unit round and starting to sort of shoot in here. We're actually starting to get hit by a little bit of stuff now. Um, some of the enemy range starts to return fire as well, which makes things a little bit more difficult for us. You'll see we start to pick up a few casualties on the uh, the archer units, unfortunately. I think the enemy built a little bit of artillery as well to shoot into us. I kind of got a bit too brazen. I was trying to shoot into some of the enemy range at the back. And we pick up a good chunk of kills, you know, considering that we basically crashed on this game and, and had done nothing up until the start of this base defence. I was, I was pretty pleased with how this had panned out. Most of the unit gets themselves killed, but even with only a handful of them left alive, they they can still kill stuff. You know, they still actually do a pretty decent chunk of damage when you're hitting units for almost 2k. And that still makes them a pretty threatening unit. Then we make a little bit of a more of a concerted sort of final push, and there's still two minutes left, so I was very slightly, you know, aware that we've just got to be a little bit careful. So I just pulled back a little bit onto the point, just so we can get some shots on the, the remaining little bit of stuff that comes on. And they do that just fine, you know, picking up a few extra little kills. And they kind of keep firing us as I then basically neglect them and forget about them and go off and to do my own thing. So, yeah, that's really kind of been my experience so far with Imparchers. I tend to enjoy running them pretty close range. But then I tend to enjoy running most of my archers close range. I think because I don't really want to be stood at the back of a map babysitting them and if you leave them and aren't even vaguely with them then an enemy hero inevitably finds their way into them and just kills them so i tend to find to tend, tend to find you have to run them fairly aggressively the damage is certainly really nice and they are definitely hero killers particularly if they get a full volley into an enemy hero you know they could be really really quite brutal in that capacity i think the problem is they're very fragile you know an enemy bow hero can ruin your day in seconds and completely wipe out the unit and that for me is probably the biggest drawback and not a unit I'm going to be using super regularly but that's mostly because I just don't really enjoy playing ranged all that much but anyway hopefully you enjoyed the video we did go on to win this game but not a lot else happens between now and the end so thank you for watching the video guys hopefully you've enjoyed it do subscribe to the channel for a lot more Conquer Blade content thanks for watching I shall see you all on the next video